Up you go. Hello, everybody. This is Beth Wearsdale, author. Welcome to the Witty Writer Show. And I'm so chuffed because today I have with me J.F. Lowe, or as I know her, Jen. Hello, darling. Hi. What's been happening? <laughs> Everything. Everything's been happening. I, I, I'm sure you're in the same boat as me, Jen. There are never enough hours in the day to get everything done. No, but there's always plenty of wine in the day to get it done. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I'm a bit partial to the old red wine, I have to tell you. Um, so, Jen, you're in Australia. Is it Brisbane? Yes. Wow. Yes. So, at the moment, beautiful, sunny autumn, almost winter. But um, I must say, we don't really get winter here. It's, no, it's just, wild. Yeah, you just get like a cooler summer, don't you? It's like yeah. you get two summers, but one's cooler than the other. I still it still blows my mind that I'm talking to you on a Thursday, but for you it's actually Friday. It's Friday morning and plenty of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you think. Um, Liana has joined us. Look. Hey Leah. Oh. Angel. There she is. Look, the little minx. Hello, darling. I hope you're doing okay. She's so awesome. She, do you know what? She cracks me up. She, she, she must have you in fits, Jen. Hey, I can't cool. wait till we do the US next year because we are going to have a ball. Oh, I'm so excited for you. I am so excited for you. Every time I see one of Leanna's posts and stuff, I'm literally crying because I'm just laughing that much. My sense of humor is absolutely wicked. <laughs> I know. I know. I absolutely love it to bits. Now, Jen, you're an international best-selling author, and I know for a fact you've got over 10 books all published, which is oh, that's just absolutely amazing. Um, what on earth sparked your interest in writing? Because I know you're from a military family, aren't you? Yes, and I'm actually from military myself. So oh, I was in the Navy. I did not know that. Yeah, so I joined the Royal Australian Navy when I was 17. So basically following that long line of military men in my family. But I basically started out of boredom. <laughs> um, yeah. I, my marriage had broken down and I moved to Sydney and I went back to university and the first week the lecturer said to me, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm sorry, that's rude. He goes, I'd love you to meet my wife. And I'm sorry, mate, I am not into that. <laughs> and the next minute I know, I actually said, no, 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 it's okay. Um, we'll meet at a coffee shop. I'd like you to meet her. And I sat down with him and he goes, look, have you ever thought about writing books? I've read your backstory. You've got a lot of credit. You've already got degrees. What are you doing here? And wow. his wife was a publisher. And That's amazing. Went from there. I tell you, it just goes to show you, doesn't it, that sometimes fate really does step in and give you a whole new direction that you that you didn't even consider. That's amazing. It's certainly a different entry, to be honest. Up until I went through cancer in 2009, I didn't read books. Mm. I simply didn't read books. I had to read one in high school, which was The Power of One by Bryce Courtney, and then until Twilight came out. I'd read nothing um, and I read that through, I sat there through cancer treatment and just keep reading because I had to do something. Yeah, you had to sit there and just sit take there. What come in. Exactly. That's it. Do you know what? It's amazing because I've met quite, I've got quite a few friends who, who just weren't into reading and yet all of a sudden it's like they found their genre and then once they found their genre that they really enjoyed, they just haven't stopped since. And, and that's probably the same for you, isn't it? Once you found something that actually intrigued you and, and just sucked you in. Well, that's it. And I suppose my genre is such as I'm a kinky little devil. <laughs> <laughs> it's, one, it's one of those ones. Is I, I do love reading that. And um, I basically, I got Fifty Shades of Grey. I got Audrey Cullen's Calendar Girls. I found Lexi Blake and just went, I love you. I want this. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you know what? It's funny because um, there, there are certain authors and certain books that literally just blow up the publishing world. And and as much as people, you know, you get lots of people, you know, including some of my family, family members that just 
didn't like Fifty Shades, couldn't get into it, wasn't impressed. I, but the majority of the people I know Love absolutely it. loved it. And I devoured every single book. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed them. I mean, thoroughly enjoyed them. I really it took me a month to get through the first chapter because I thought, oh, this is rubbish. And then once I read past that, I went, oh, give me, give me, give me. Yeah. <laughs> I I home every day of the week. <laughs> I know, right? I got sucked in straight away. I, but and I've had this conversation with Liana because um, obviously she's a huge fan as well. Um, but the great thing about the Fifty Shades series um, is that you? The, the more you read with each book, you find out more and more about the characters. Um, you know, you get a, a deeper into their psyche, you why they are the way they are. Um, being passionately into those books, do you think that um, has helped you with your writing and, and given you the freedom to just write passionately? Absolutely. I think probably more of an example is Lexi Blake, her mm -hmm. character of Ian Taggart in the Masters and Mercenary series, when, you know what, it doesn't have to sit between the lines. You can go, like, laugh out loud, but kinky as hell, and write, this is what it is. And certainly my military line comes out and go, you know what, there's a set of rules. If you don't stick by it, I'm going to tell you where to go as well. <laughs> so yeah. I, I'm pretty... I'll say uniform in that sense, but I think the dominant side and that whole, you know, I take orders and I'm used to taking orders, yeah. um, it, it follows. And it's that passion of going, you know, what? I love it. I wouldn't yeah. have joined the Navy if I didn't love it. I didn't, wouldn't have read those books if I loved them. Like I've got a stack in front of me at the moment and literally the wall in front of me on my desk is the my most loved authors. Yeah, yeah. And that passion just keeps going. I write... Like certainly my forbidden stories, it's kinky, it's military, it's a mixture of everything. Yeah. I, I, I'm super excited for you, especially now I know that you've got so many coming out as well. I'm super I do. It's a packed year because um, we weren't supposed to be able to travel anywhere, but we've got a couple of signings here in Brisbane and Gold Coast this year. And the US so far, I've got 14 events on. For next oh, year gosh. Oh, i'm actually yeah. hoping i'm actually hoping to try and meet you and liana when you come over because you're going to be in vegas yes and we're going to be in san diego yes which is only like two two and a half hours away so i'm going to be there i'm going to be in the car meeting you it's going to be absolutely amazing we've got lots of people popping up so i'm going to put some uh, people on to say hello let's have a look um, oh, Liana says, I'm not going to be. I can't wait till next year. It's going to be awesome. It is. It's going to have an absolute blast. Uh, Peggy, Hi, Peggy. <laughs> Peggy's just joined us. Hi, Peggy. Um, let's have a look. And oh, what? Oh, Leslie says, I miss everything. Stupid job. Always messing things up. Don't worry, Leslie. You're here now. That's all that matters. That's More all that matters. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Liana says, write what you know. That's what I say. I, I'm, I'm in agreement with that. I think it's good to try different things, but I think we're always more confident and we write better when it's something that we're passionate about. Absolutely. It comes across, doesn't it? Yeah, and if all the details are vague behind it, it doesn't make the story. If you have no idea what's, you know, I'll say my next book, Seduction. If you've never been to Austin, you wouldn't know. No. If you've never been to Philly, that's coming out, you wouldn't know. And certainly my um, series of love games, unless you've been in that situation, you wouldn't know. No. Like I've been married before. I'm currently I'm married again. And unless you've been through that process, there's no idea about it. No, no. And it's very individual as well, isn't it? I mean, any situation that you go through is very different because obviously we're different people. So you're right. Nobody can sort of judge or know what it's like because every situation is completely different. Exactly. Absolutely. I've got exactly. a no judgment policy. You come with what you have, you're accepted as you are and bring on the loving. Exactly. I like that. I might have to write that down. Um, well, obviously, I'm going to pinch it off you, but I might use it occasionally. Um, James has joined. Desi says, greetings on and all. Hello, James. Hi, James. 
is awesome, awesome. And look, Leanna's getting all excited about future trips that she's saying, whoop, whoop. Well, she gets to spend my birthday with me next year when we go to San Diego and Vegas. So we're going to run a mark through Vegas. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be like double celebration. Oh, my, you're going to have a blast. You're going to need a vacation just to recover. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy's joined us as well. She says, hi, ladies. Hi, Wendy. And Leanna says, yes, she can't wait. It's, that is so cool. I'm super excited for you. I really, really am. Now, you've published over 10 books. I believe there's about 16, I think, which is absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. And you're a, a mum as well. Mum of three. How, how do you fit that all in? I mean, I, I find it tough now. My children are older. Um, but it's crazy, isn't it, trying to trying to fit everything in do you do do it during the day or do you do it at night when the kids are, are in bed sleeping what's your oh, pretty much everything school holidays is the hardest because they just want to do stuff um we come originally from central queensland which all small country towns so it's one of those things couldn't do anything before but now in brisbane it's like i want to go here i want to go there can we do this luckily we've got a pool so that entertains them other than the cooler months yeah. um but I've got a policy of when it's family time or school holidays, it's no devices and stuff. So yeah. there's no Xbox, there's no PlayStation. So it's hangout time. It's we sit down, play cards, we run around the, we've got a massive um, park crossroad, run around the field. But then I have to cram everything in when it comes to writing. So it's it's hard. Yeah, it is. And, and for me, I'm the same. I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm one of those. If I know that something needs doing, I can't settle to write until it's done because mm. otherwise it's like you haven't done it yet you haven't done it yet and it yeah. drives me insane so so sometimes i literally stay up till like two o'clock in the morning yeah. because i'm like okay all right it's 10 o'clock i finally got everything done i can relax and i could just focus and then i'll just get stuck in so from like 10 o'clock till two i'm like Shh. <laughs> Yeah. Well, last night was just after midnight for me, and that was editing. And I've got pretty much the rest of the day editing and most of the weekend editing for another book coming out. And it's it doesn't stop. Uh, it's just crazy. It really, really is crazy. So obviously your military background and your family's military background has had a massive impact on you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's wonderful that you're using those experiences in your books, I really do, because there's a huge market for it, isn't there? I mean, the amount of women um, and husbands who are who are literally, you know, at home, away from their loved ones, who yeah. are, you know, away doing their jobs in the military, um, I think it's great because, you know, most of them are going to be able to really connect with your books because yeah. their partner is in the military. That's it. And the other part is, is that I think that, being a woman in the military, especially here in Australia, it wasn't a big thing. So this is 20 years ago yeah. and things have changed. There weren't that many women in the. And I also, being 17, I turned 18 on my, like the very first night that you could go out on leave. So my first book that was brought out, which is The Sailor's Daughter, is exactly like my 18th birthday where I got signed out by a petty officer and went, right, it's your birthday, let's go out and have fun. And they made sure I was dressed and on the parade gown first thing Monday morning. And I don't remember a single thing. <laughs> See, I was in a similar boat because I signed up for the Air Force while I was at school because I was 16 for everybody else. Um, so I went into the Air Force at 17 and for so long I had to get bed checked. Yeah. Uh, you know, a duty wife <laughs> would have to come and bed check <laughs> yeah. in my bed, you know, because yeah. they, they become your legal guardians, don't they? When you enlist under 18, yeah, under age, they're yeah. your legal guardian. So That's I right. said, go to my room, get bed checked, wait half an hour and then sneak out again. <laughs> Yeah, and luckily for us, in the way it was set, ours was on the lower level of a dorm. And the guys were upstairs. But it was at night, and you've got guys on one level and girls on another. Do you not see that something's going to happen there? Oh, my God. No, uh, my block was was all women. It was all girls. But there was always guys coming in and out from the other girls. Um, but I was more into sports and stuff, so I was always in the gym. 
Um, and and I hated not being able to go in the gym at night, especially with the, they used to bed check me so early. It was ridiculous. Yeah. The nice thing was, and I'm sure, and I'm sure you had this, when you go into the armed services so young, people want to take you under their wing. Yeah. They feel very protective over you, don't they? Oh, yes. And, and But it's actually in a really, really nice way. And when you do turn 18, everybody wants to celebrate for you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was four weeks before I could. I turned 18 and everybody, it was like, got to look. I was nicknamed Nancy because my last name at the time and my maiden name was Drew. So I was Nancy Drew all the time. <laughs> and, or as they said, the bitch that knows everything because <laughs> I have a military family you knew everything about the, like the ships you knew everything about you know what the requirements were and and it was drilled into your whole life yeah. and it's one of those ones where the, the things that we got up to that people protected me for and the things I got away with because they would go oh no she didn't do it it was one of us and yeah that's I think, senior officers were the probably the worst for it because it's like oh but she's all sweet and innocent and like no <laughs> definitely not we had a wall of shame in the local pub where basically they popped up different photos throughout the the 12 weeks of recruit training and my face was planted all over it for a very long time oh my God. very long time because i also looked very different i was very skinny long blonde hair oh. i had that really barbie doll look to me and yeah it got me in trouble. That is awesome. <laughs> Do you find that, you know, all your experiences in the Navy um, have given you so much material that you can use for your books? Yeah, I've got a whole series based on just that. Um, and at this stage, there's eight in the series by the time we've gotten to where we are. And there is talk of um, putting it into, I'll say, a TV series perspective. Um, yeah. So that's on the table at the moment because it is very unique. It's very Australian. However, it kind of spreads out. At the moment, there's, I'll say, offshoots of it. So we've got some starting in the US and we've got some uh, certainly throughout New Zealand because we have obviously the Anzacs. We have a very close close with them. Um, and the other one is the UK, which kind of surprised me because I worked with somebody and we recently in the uk and went oh i know this person do you know that oh we met here so we've kind of started working together and some other people that i know have gone did you remember this and we'll talk about a situation yes that's a good book wow that's just amazing isn't it it's, it's crazy how you can go through life and not realize that you, your experiences can actually be used for something so creative and i think that's absolutely wonderful i really do and it's weird because you ju you just never know what's going to take off do you i mean when i was in the air force neighbors had just come out oh yeah, <laughs> With yeah. Charlene and, and what was the yeah. oh, we, had and and we would have had um craig craig something along those lines but yeah yeah, yeah and that was huge and and i got to, i got to my training camp once i'd passed out and and everybody was like, I've got to get back to the block because Neighbours is on. I'm like, what on <laughs> Neighbours? It just goes to show, you know, that you never know what's going to explode and go big because um, everybody I knew was addicted to Neighbours. Yeah. It, were. It's still like, on. This is what gets me. It's still on all these years later. It yeah. is still on. Um, my my cousin my husband's cousin still watches he calls it australian culture <laughs> i love that i love it. i must have i did get addicted to it because everybody used to watch it um oh, and yeah. there was no one to hang out with because they were all watching the tv yeah i must admit i've probably watched three episodes my entire life no i never, I never did like we have neighbors and we have home and away never got into any of them i was more a bones kind of girl where um david brandes absolutely um currently i'm certainly a lucifer girl i absolutely Me love Tom Ellis. i yeah. any, drool over top and anything henry cavill anything down that line yes you've got me but I think back in the 
I suppose it was always men in a uniform, like um, Richard Gere. Nothing for me beats Richard Gere in a uniform oh, or God. something like that. Yeah. Even Sean Connery's voice is just like sex on the just the the voice, sex on a stick. Don't not the looks before he passed, but oh, yeah, yeah. The voice. Antonio Banderas. Oh yes, yes, I know who you mean. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Because you're right. There is such a big um, market out there for fiction that play with strong males who are very alpha they don't take no shit they protect their women and you know and they're they're badass and, and there's still a, a strong market for that even even though i think that the the me too movement had a, a knock-on effect to that yeah. Um, you know, there were a lot of women and, and friends of mine who were like, oh, God damn it, me too. I just want a you know, man to take me against the wall and do this and do that. And yet you've got a whole, you, you know, new um, age group of men who are terrified of doing anything without asking. And yet the girls are wanting this and the dudes are too afraid of it. So fiction, they get what they want. They, you know, they get the strong alpha males who are, passionate and strong and so macho oh, um, it's, it's the dream without you know having to worry about what line you cross in reality yeah it, it really is because whatever happens in your head because every single person visualizes it very differently yeah. um it's some of them some people go oh i don't like that character so much what i see in my head is just this arrogant prick versus i go oh yep that that's got me going <laughs> It's funny how we're all attracted to something so different, isn't it? And uh, what tickles me is the fact that, that you know, a lot of women do like men in uniform. There's something so <laughs> actually powerful about that. But it's the same for men as well because, you know, there's a lot of men and they see, a, you know, a nurse in, you know, in the more oh. traditional nurses' dresses. Mm. And they go in all of, all of a quiver. So oh. it's not just... You know, women who are attracted to men in uniform, it's 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 it goes both ways. Absolutely. And that in a three piece suit, I am you turn up in a suit and you are like just the tiniest little bit of stuzzle stubble ch chiseled ch yes. like jawline, yeah. hair, inky black hair, like Gideon from Crossfire series. Oh. Yeah. I'll take you every day. I know it comes mixed up, but I will take you every day of the week. <laughs> well, Matt Bomber, like, I'm not sure if you ever watched um, White Collar. He's yeah. also in Magic Mike. And as much as I know um, he doesn't swing my way, oh, I will still take him every day of the week because he's it's just the blue eyes that do me. Oh. The deep, the, the really bright blue eyes. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. I I I actually wanted him to be Mr. Gray. Yeah. I think he would have been perfect. And, and you're right, I didn't care that he's gay. I that doesn't bother me. Yeah. Oh. Bit. But he should have been Christian Gray as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, there's a few that ran through my head and I went, oh like as much as I like Jamie Dorian, he just for me didn't fit the bill. But however, the person in my head, I went, no, you're slightly taller, you've got darker hair, um, you've got just a total presence about you. Yes. Like it, it's one of those ones, I own you kind of thing, it, and it's really, it's there. It's yeah. it's absolutely there. It's just the look. Yeah. And I feel for it because it's one of those, you've got a big shoes to fill. And yeah. that image that people have been reading over and over again, they're big shoes to fill. Yeah, they sure are. <laughs> Maybe other places too. He had a good go. He had a good go. Yeah. <laughs> we and got Leanna sitting here going, no, that's my man. <laughs> no, that's my man. I love him. He would fight all of us for him, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got some more comments, so I'm going to pop them on. Uh, Wendy says, thank you so much for giving me new authors to read, including you. Oh, she is so thank lovely. You, she is. Um, Leanna says, uh-oh, we've had a breakdown in trans in transmission. I don't know, what, in, in streaming? I, oh, maybe it's the, the Jamie Dorian thing. 
No, right. Really? <laughs> That'll make sense. That'll make sense. Um, she's oh, here. Laughing her ass off, good old neighbours. <laughs> um, um, Prue agrees. Hello, Prue. She says, don't they all? Yes, they do. Um, Leanna says, whoop, whoop, Henry Cavell um, would make an awesome James Bond. Oh, I agree. Um, he so has got the whole package, isn't he? he really... Sean Connery, I think, was the all-time greatest James Bond. Um, he has the whole package. Us, I didn't like Daniel Craig as much as he's he just wasn't attractive he, enough for me. As much as he's got the persona, but he just doesn't have the the oh I'm sex on legs. Yeah. No, Daniel Craig, I was impressed with because mm -hmm. he, he's professional and yet he's a bit of a bad man. I quite like that because that's what James Bond is all about, really. Uh, but Henry Cavell. Mm, yeah, I agree. He's just got the whole package, and I think that's what viewers want, don't they? I think they really do. Um, Prue says, my brother was the one addicted to Neighbours and Far Away, LOL. There was quite a few. I knew quite a few guys oh, yeah. that actually loved the soap, so I must admit. Yeah. Far Away, I never really got into, but um, – Leanna says, one person's arrogant prick is another person's lifeline. It just depends on what you're into. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, Leanna. <laughs> oh, me, she just oh, me. I would cut a bitch for him. That, yeah, I, I know. You. <laughs> oh, no. She'd end up in prison. You'd oh, end yeah. up in somebody's bitch because you'd be locked up. Yeah, and then I'd have to bail her out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, <laughs> she says the stream keeps stopping. Well, that's weird because we're not having any issues here. It might be your Wi-Fi, I think, young lady. Um, uh, Wendy says, my son just finished boot camp for the Air Force. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. That is awesome. I hope he thoroughly enjoys it because yeah. I, I know you did, Jen, and I oh, yeah. loved it. I really did. There's a whole camaraderie and social scene that you get being in the armed forces that you don't get in civilian life. No. It's no, completely I still have very good friends with every single one of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's one of those ones I still get called Nancy everywhere I go. If I run into them, I'm still Nancy. <laughs> oh, I think that's lovely. I, I, I like the fact you had such a nice nickname because I've got to be honest, um, when I was a teen um, and and right up until I had the kids actually I was just skinny but all oh, boob mm. um, and I <laughs> nothing wrong with that <laughs> nothing wrong with the boob apart from when you do a lot of swimming Jen oh yes That's... because unfortunately when you're swimming and you come out of the water unfortunately two things come up before <laughs> else. so my name my nickname in the air force was Nessie oh yes because of the two humps it was not yeah. But, you know, you just got to laugh these things off. Yeah, I must admit, Nancy Drew wasn't the worst thing in the world. No. <laughs> and mine could have been a lot worse. <laughs> I agree with the swimming, though, because I swam when I was younger and made state and nationals um, for swimming. Wow. And it was one of those things that, yeah, when you're swimming in, it was back when the cat suits were a big thing yeah. and nothing fit in because I'm like the – the camera doesn't show up, but I'm quite a large girl overall, but I'm very large there. Yeah. And it's one of these ones I try and plaster everything to it. So it's, yes, I can understand the Nessie part. It's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> and I've got to tell you, the viewers, big boobs are overrated. Yeah, my husband would disagree. <laughs> the men always do. Loves it. But there is nothing worse than laying down and seeing two things slide underneath your armpit. <laughs> That's just not a sexy look, Jen. It's just not. Yeah. Just... <laughs> oh, oh, we're going to have so much fun in the States. Oh, I'm cracking myself up, I tell you. Um, let's have a look. Liana says, um, I haven't watched any of the Bond movies since Pierce Brosnan was in it. I am shocked because yeah. because they, they, they've they been all right. Yeah. They yeah, really the action been. part, the silliness, but the I think – there is that sex appeal with him, but it's the who he has it with, like Money Penny, the new Money Penny, um, yeah. and that I absolutely adore her. She is fantastic. 
and it's one of those ones I almost want to see a little side series of her and and what she gets up to because I think it'd be hilarious. I like the fact that she's got a bit of snark now. Oh yes, this Money Penny was always very passive. It's always, and, yeah, Miss Prim and Proper, but th this one's like got a little bit of a snark. Um, you know, a bit of sarcasm. Oh, stuff. Shot, you're just lucky that I didn't. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> deliberate. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, Liana is cracking up big time. <laughs> uh, <coughs> and she says, I'd be Big Bertha's bitch knowing my luck. You are <laughs> probably right. Just don't bend over for the soap. That's what I <laughs> Um, she says, haha, welcome to my world. I have to throw one boob over my shoulder just to roll over in bed at night. It's a good job they're not that big where somebody lays on them as you're as they're turning over, Liana. I've been there too. Um it's it's just I, I love the fact that you got such a great sense of humor, Jen, because I'm sure that really comes through in your books as well. Um where does your where did your inspiration strike from you know the places where the books are set, the characters? Do you base those things on real places that you've been to and real people you've met? Some of them, yes. So a lot of it is places. So my new one, and if I quickly just grab this. Oh, yes, do show because they're absolutely yeah. fantastic covers. My new one, Seducing Austin. Look at that. Hello, um, monsieur. It is about Austin, Austin, Texas. Um, in 2019, I toured the States uh, with my husband and we went to a number of signings and we actually stayed in Austin for about a month. And yeah. as we went around, I went, oh, I love this. But when we first started in the States, we came in through San Fran, went over to Vegas. Then from there we went to Charlotte, North Carolina. Then I drove up to West Virginia because I'm a Barnwood Builders kind of fan. I'm the, I, I'm the total hillbilly at the moment <laughs> um, and that. But we spent the rest of the time in each one. I wrote something there because I'm like, oh, all these places, all these new things I hadn't seen before because I'd yeah. never been to the US. And when I got to Washington, D.C., I was standing outside the Capitol building about to go in. I went, oh, I could so write this sexy senator and well, that's trying to be corrupted and this um, news reporter that just wants to get the goss on him and, and just full on tear down the Capitol building. Um, and it started a chain reaction and just kept writing. And I had, luckily I only had one notepad with me because my husband, every day I was sitting there just scrolling out messy handwriting going, right, this, that, and the other. And he's just looked at me at the end and gone, you realise we're not going to be able to take all this home? Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> Ditch the clothes, more books, more paperwork, we're done. <laughs> That's just amazing, isn't it? And, and what's truly amazed me, um, I mean, we've, we've been in America now for 10 years um, and we've lived, we did five years on, uh, on the East Coast and we're now on the West Coast. Um, and when we moved from South Carolina to California, we literally did Route 66 right the way across the country. It blew my mind how different each big city is. You know, the types of buildings, the type mm -hmm. of people, the way that, you know, the friendliness level. Um it's yeah. amazing the difference, and it is like going from one country to another country because the differences can be so dramatic. Um, you must have been in your element making so many notes. It is one of those ones. Because Australia is so different to the States, I went, I suppose, doe-eyed as I went in. I was just, you know, holy, holy crap. I got to San Fran and as we made our way down and we actually went on Route 66 for some of it. So we actually went through Barstow um, on the way through to Vegas. And the differences between that and when we, say, arrived in New York, yeah. I went, okay, this is New York. This is not the big lights and glamour that I was kind of expecting, but it wasn't until we sat back for a couple of days I went, okay, now I see it. Yeah, but places like North Carolina and through to Virginia and all that sort of stuff, the rolling hills of green, which in Australia we don't tend to have. You no. know, we we got the ocean, then the country, and it goes from green to dirt. Yeah. Um, 
and the changes even up to Niagara Falls when we went to Niagara Falls um I've got one coming out next year called seducing the falls but we didn't actually get to the Canada side um because we didn't get time but as I stood there I went you know this is the most romantic kind of imagine the proposal there imagine all the things you could do we were on the maid of the mist absolutely soaking wet and my husband turned around and went I love you and I went okay oh and he kissed me and it's like we're in Miller boat. There's all these tourists around. Guys, it's just, it's just nice. <laughs> it's the moment you feel yeah. the moment. You feel the moment, and you feel that moment in each place that we went. Yeah. And which we went, oh, you know what? And we were going to stay. We got offered to stay for five years, but yeah. we kind of came back at a good timing because that was the end of, um, end of 2019. We came back for a wedding, and then after that, the borders closed. So yeah. we. We kind of had great timing from that perspective, but I can't wait to go back next year. Yeah. Oh, you're, going gonna have have you're going to have an absolute blast. You really, really are. I'm so Leanna and I are going to run a mark. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, mark. Oh, here they come. Honestly, it's going to be brilliant. Now, you've got a new new release coming out yeah. uh, this coming Tuesday, which is super exciting, which is Seducing Austin. Um, you've also got one coming out next month, which is Wickedly Innocent. Oh, yes. I believe I have that one here for you too. It's so exciting. It is one of those ones where I've, if I, not yet just trying to make sure I didn't play the video part of it because it's uh, <laughs> a little bit too risque for um you might start me off on a hot flush last last um, last time we did yeah, this, was a major hot I'll flush trouble for some of the things um they've recently banned me from TikTok on a few things and gone you're it's too inappropriate but this is with me listen that is stunning i love that cover and this time she, the heroine, she is the full on, I'm going to take your ass down. I don't take any crap from anybody and I will own your ass. Wow. I love it. It's so exciting. Honestly, God. And then obviously you've got more coming out this year as well, which you're yeah. busy, you know, editing and, and writing and everything else. It's, it's just absolutely phenomenal and just so all our viewers know um jen has got pr profiles on all the social media um so please do follow her because she's absolutely fantastic and so much fun um but you're on you're on facebook instagram twitter all over the place which is absolutely awesome thank you helped by liana because otherwise i couldn't manage all of it <laughs> and she's I fantastic i it's tough though isn't it i mean i do it all myself at the moment but trying to, you know, especially with the pandemic, you have to do everything online. So I'm literally do, doing all my profiles everywhere, plus the website and everything else. Mm. How much of a difference has it made to you having Liana as your PA and having that support oh. and help? Can I just say I absolutely love her. It, <laughs> the change that I had a PA previously um, from the state and – I'd ask for like very basic stuff to happen and it just never happened. And when I found Leanna, and I just happened to come across her in another group and I went, I was watching her posts and everything like that. And then I saw some of her humor come out and I went, she's my girl. She's my girl. And I approached her and just went, sent her a message and went, have you ever thought about this? And she went, no. I went, let's talk. <laughs> and I think by the time we had a little chat worked out, we're both, as nutty as each other and love I suppose just I was going to say just sex but I love love everything yeah you're kindred spirits aren't you you got it's such a good rapport um, <laughs> with each other I think that's amazing um and, and she's so good with all the social media isn't yeah. she it's made uh, I'm she's sure it's made a massive queen. yeah oh yeah. some of her posts not just hilarious but like a lot of time and passions got into it. So she, certainly things like TikTok. I had no idea about TikTok until my 13-year-old showed me like, uh, Christmas time. And I went, TikTok, I'm too old for TikTok. The post that Liana comes out with, absolutely fabulous. Yeah. Um, 
and the stuff that she shares, and not just for myself, for for gen- like authors in general, because she promotes the fact that hey, there are a lot of authors out there that have never been heard of, and yeah. they're fabulous books. Just because it's a a big named um, certainly publishing company, there are so many indie publishing that are absolutely, I mean, absolutely fantastic. I agree. I mean, I've got I've got a number of followers. Um, and they just love indie writers. Yeah. Um, and, and I think a lot of it's because um, they're not afraid to write what they're passionate about. They don't have, um, you know, companies hanging over their heads and, oh, no, you can't say that. And, oh, no, you can't do this. And they just write passionately. And their readers absolutely love it because it makes it more real. Um, and I must admit, I'm the same. I mean, I wrote in, in one of my books um, about my, my main character's husband rolling over in bed and farting. But that's that's, that's life. life. That is life. It's, it's you know, it's, it's how many women, you know, have that experience, you know. <laughs> well, and the snoring. The the snoring, the hair, everything. Else. Do you know what I mean? An element of real life can make all the difference, can't it? You, do you know oh, what I mean? The human and relatability. Like, yes, exactly, exactly. Now, out of all of your books, and and there are lots, ladies and gentlemen, there are lots. Don't forget to leave reviews for Jen. Um, who is your favourite character? Is and is it male or female? Um, there's two, both one male, one female. Probably my favourite is Declan from the Masters of High Class series. He's the coxswain's cuffs. So he's literally based on somebody I knew from the Navy. Um, and he wasn't a coxswain, which is basically military police for the Navy. He just acted like one. He was the taskmaster. And he was the punishment you would get from him in a sense of, Um, because he was a PT trainer, it was down to the wire of going, right, you're in trouble, there is punishment, you might not like it, but you'll enjoy it by the end. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, and the other one would certainly be um, from an upcoming series. So, Gabrielle, um, and it's coming out in Seducing Austin. I love her because it's one of those ones where where she's come from to where she is and then what she does at the very end, I just go, you know, you're kick-ass. Oh, fantastic. So she's a girl after your own heart. Oh, sort of. <laughs> I'm one of those ones that I've always had a mouth on me, so I'm not afraid to say my P's and Q's. <laughs> I, I definitely don't mind them. Um, and I'm very well known to not just sit back and kind of go, well, that's lovely, sweetheart. I am like, no, we're going to do this. We're going to do this now. And if you don't like it, there's the door. But I love that. I think that's so refreshing. I really, really do. I really, really do. We've got some more comments, so I'm going to pop them up. Um, bear with me because I'm, oh, there we go. I'm still reading the Big Bertha comment from Leanna. It's still making me chuckle. <laughs> I find it funny because Big Berth is actually something in the Navy. It's actually this massive rope and we would have to carry it um, as part of punishment and carry this rope. And there was the entire Napier class and we'd have to stop and at carry it, stop at each light pole, sit, do push-ups, get up, pick it up over our shoulders and keep running to the next light pole, more push-ups and that. And it was punishment. Oh, my God. So, yeah. I'm just going to say, Leanna, you're the punisher. She loves that. The enforcer. That's so fit. That's amazing. Oh, my gosh. Um, Wendy says, I'm so proud of my son. He was dorm chief and he got uh, got Warhawk. But enough about him. You gush away. I I think it's lovely. But being proud of your kids is nothing to to hide. I think that's absolutely wonderful. No wonder you're proud. Um, Leanna says, laughing my ass off. I couldn't be that lucky. I'm currently sharing my bed with my books and my hospital bag. Bless her. Mm. She's so funny. But it'll be worth it, darling. It'll be worth it. Um, James says, I live in West Virginia, but I've tried to live it down. <laughs> so funny. West Virginia is a beautiful place, though, James. I do love it. Yes, I was just about to say that. It is absolutely beautiful. 
Um, Prue says, I bet you two will. I think that's with regards to having a blast. Yeah, troublemakers we are. <laughs> and Leanna says, it will be my uh, be my first time going to the States. God help you all. LOL, it will be like epic. epic. Oh, my gosh, you're going to have such a good time. And Wendy says, LOL, what about <laughs> ovens? Such I, ovens. <laughs> I think we've both been there and done it. And oh, it. yeah. <laughs> absolutely there is nothing funnier than life there really really isn't you can't make this shit up you really can't <laughs> um and i think it's great that you incorporate all these factors into your books because no wonder your readers love your books so much because they are relatable and you know and exciting and you know thrilling and all that sizzling hotness um your books are you you and your books are a bit of a whole package really <laughs> But it's one of those ones. I don't. I think with every author, that's what it is because it's part of them. Each little book is part of them, and whether it be something in life or whether it's something that's been fantasy, but it's still part of them. And characters either having conversations in your head where it's almost like a battle to go right. This is reality, and this is not. Versus what they know of everyday life. So yeah. each part of them becomes part of the book. Like I've got this particular one, which is Composing Sins, and I'm really bad at this whole I'm just get the camera. camera. And that's it. Just do it in front of you. That's it. Perfect. And that is awesome. This one um, is actually set in the States in New York. And I started this one because I walked in to our local pub and on the wall is this massive um, base and on that, in this, like this, beside it was a cello. This cello walked in, I went, I love it. The next thing, day I heard uh, on, I think it was YouTube or something like that, this particular cellist, and he was divine. He looked divine. He was just, I love this song. But he was remaking like um, Nirvana songs. He was remaking things like Desposito and all with this cello. And I went, you're my man. And I'd met a lady in New York in, in one of them, I'll say, back alley pubs um, called Rudy's, and she was this vibrate, vibrate, vibrate. <laughs> yeah, this person that was just her personality just oozed sex appeal. Yeah. She yeah. was African American, and she was just sexy as all hell. Oh, we uh, have froze but, now, Leanna. We have froze. Yeah. I don't know whether it's me or. <laughs> Are you still oh. there, darling? Are you still there? I, we yep, clicked. Right here. <laughs> it did. It did freeze for a second. Mine too. I, I couldn't hear or see anything. <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. So you're saying about this lovely lady and she just. She oozed sex appeal and she was she was it. Yeah. And I went, I adore you. And she said, oh, look, I'm an up and coming singer. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. I've got an interview next week um, at the New York or Lincoln Center. And I went, no. what's a Lincoln Center? And then she explained all this stuff and I went, you're amazing. You know, no. I, it just she was divine, absolutely divine. And when I say sex appeal, I have never looked at a woman going, holy crap, like that. Yeah, but some people just have that aura and confidence about themselves and sometimes they don't even realize they have it but yeah. you know, I, I've met people like that who literally just shine yeah. their personality just shines out of them and and people like that tend to take your breath away don't they I think that's yeah. really and I hope for her sake, and I haven't been able to keep up with her, that she got that. She got exactly what she wants. And that's what I've used as my muse for this particular book. And there's a second part. People hate it when I do certain things at the end of a book and I get absolutely slammed for something. But the other people love them, especially yeah. things like cliffhangers. If I leave some kind of cliffhanger, some people are like, oh, you bitch, how could you do that? <laughs> um, but on the other side of it, they're like, oh, when's the next one? When's the next one? Yeah, I want more. It's like that moment of give me, give me, give me. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. I think some people either love or hate cliffhangers, but even the people that hate them, they really do love them because yeah. it, it makes it more exciting for the next one. So it yeah. keeps me in suspense for a little bit. Um, so I, and I'm not, I'm like that. I get frustrated with cliffhangers 
but only if I have to wait too long. <laughs> yeah, well, luckily for me, for that one, Recording Sins is coming out very shortly too. So that's the last part of that duet. And, oh, yes, it's hot. It is melting and hot. Oh, my gosh. My, I read one line to my husband and he went, um, are you busy? <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know you've got it right, don't you? <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Oh, my gosh. Wendy says, I love you both, but I have to go. That's okay, darling. That is okay. Have a great um, day, Wendy. She's so sweet. Um, just so everybody knows, it, th this interview with Jen is going to be live on my page. It's going to be there. It's not going to be going anywhere. Um, and it will be shared on, on YouTube and everywhere else that we are. So don't worry um, if you haven't been able to catch the whole thing or you're watching it after you finished work or whatever, because you can view the whole thing. Um, and please remember to share. Um, because obviously it helps Jen out. It's it's wonderful, especially as she's got all these fantastic new books coming out, which is so exciting. It's unbelievable. Um, how have you how have you been since all the pandemic? Have you been trying to do everything online and stuff? Oh, we're not too bad because we've been here in Brisbane. We actually haven't had to worry a great deal. We had two three day lockdowns. Otherwise, life has been as normal. Wow. Uh, I do most of my stuff online anyway because I yeah. do work a lot with the US. So I tend to do a lot of that nighttime because basically from 10, a, 10 p.m. for us is the start of the working day or start yeah. of, of conversations with the US. So I'm up rather late most nights. Not that my husband enjoys it because he's up at 5 a.m. Um, going to work. Uh, but outside of that... It hasn't really changed a great deal. The yeah. thing I miss the most is the signing, though, because you get to see all the readers, and it's so much fun. You go to these events, and um, even as a reader, I went to Book Bonanza back in 2019. I loved it, absolutely loved it, um, and just had an absolute ball meeting other readers, meeting authors that I've never met before, uh, and being lucky enough to meet some absolutely amazing authors just by pure luck they'd sit down beside you and go hi i'm erica and i was like you're el james my husband niall is fabulous <laughs> my husband niall is an absolute he, he is hilarious <laughs> That is fantastic. It just goes to show that you really do need to put yourself out there as an author, don't you? And I think whether you are traditionally published or self-published, yeah. it's super important to get yourself out there because you're right. You know, readers love to have that connection and, mm -hmm. and authors like to make friends and have that connection with other author friends because, you know, we're all in the same boat. None of us are, are really in competition with each other. Mm. Um, and it's nice to to have that camaraderie and support from each other. Um, I think that makes a, a huge, huge difference. Um, and it's so cool as well. Oh, yeah. It's, I'm making memories. Oh, some of the ones that you meet authors and then they go, okay, we're having a party back in our room and you're sitting there doing shots and then their husband comes out and goes, right, who's dancing on the tables, who's doing this and who's doing that, or they're pouring the drinks rather heavily, Pauls, and, get, and picking you up in the morning and taking you back to your room and you've got to be dressed in an hour. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you could write a whole series of books just on those, really, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I don't think they'd appreciate those ones because all the, the things that, or mischief that we've gotten up to. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> it's great for a TV series. Should be getting everybody to do call those confidentiality calls. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Around me, it's required. Leanna says, Paul Rob, I can look him in the eye knowing what I know. <laughs> yeah, my husband, it's funny because my husband's Roblo. Um, I'm Jalo. <laughs> and it, it, yeah, Leanna met my husband and when we were up at her place and some of the things that I forget that come out of my mouth and my husband stands there just red faced and going, <laughs> this is so quiet and placid and, and most of the time. And then, yeah, what happens behind closed doors, is a different, different thing, but he's so quiet. <laughs> and the things oh. I've said to the owner has gone, Oh, 
maybe I shouldn't have said that. My mouth goes and brain doesn't. <laughs> oh, but that's My like, husband will see this, so he'll be sitting there going, oh, my God, really, oh. did you have to go there? I'm exactly the same. I'm exactly sometimes I literally my mouth will engage before my brain and I am exactly the same. So I won't worry about it. Liana says it's so good to meet like-minded people at book signing. There's no judgment in what you like to read. I absolutely agree. Um and I must admit it, it does irk me when when you get book snobs. Um and you say that you like all these different types of genres and they sort of judge you oh, and no. I'm like yeah. whatever. Um I like what I like. Um, and I'm not a, I'm not ashamed of that. I was huge into Twilight. I love the Fifty Shades series, um, and I'm proud of it. And and I like lots of different genres, um, but I think that's good. Well, that's it. It, it. And it's each to their own. It's no different in life. It is yeah. each to their own. Doesn't mean you judge them. Like I've got book series that probably masters of forbidden stories where I had one reader turn around and say, "You can't put that in the book." So this one here. And it covers everything from heterosexual to uh, I have lesbian, gay, LGBTIQ. It is covers all spectrums. Yeah, because we really cover all spectrums. Yeah. The characters in my head are all spectrums because, you know, that's life. Yeah, exactly. If we were all the same, life would be boring, as my mum used to say. <laughs> And Leanna says, a variety is the spice of life. I absolutely agree. Um, Jen, you've been an absolute joy to talk to. Dar. I can't believe it's nearly an hour already. That has blown my mind. Um, but as I said, you, you've got a new release coming out this Tuesday, which is Seducing Austin. If we could have another mm -hmm. look. Oh, absolutely. So I'm one of these people. Everything's locked because I have children. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know family. what might come up. <laughs> Especially and recently. They do know that, that is awesome. Look at that cover, it's so nicely done. It really, really is. It is um, awesome. Yeah, I've got a few. The the next couple of ones for the juice seducing series. Are some of the covers I'm I'm certainly going, oh have you? That's so, have you? Come on over. She's like, oh hello. <laughs> hello Jess, yes. you are an absolute diamond. Thank you so much. For thank joining you. me today, you are absolutely amazing. Um, thank you, everybody who's joined us and watched. And as I said, don't worry if you haven't been able to see us live, um, because you can watch the whole interview whenever you like, and I will be sharing everywhere as well. Um, and don't forget, check out Jen's profiles on social media and her website and everything. And if you do buy her books, or should I say, when? When you do buy her books um please make sure you leave a review um and everybody don't forget if you're a writer or author um join our group write better author smarter and i am soon going to be interviewed interviewing the amazing mark Gottlieb, yes. who's a top agent we've tried mm -hmm. to media soon so make mm -hmm. sure you get the reminder for that as well so thank you everybody thank you jen and i will hope that we will get to catch up with you again soon. Absolutely. Thanks, Beth. You are so welcome, darling, and everybody.